still, you know, the other sideline, Shaman Coors? No, no, that's no. an Amid. <laughs> Amid. It's interesting. I think I just don't like it as a five. It could work if anyone's going to do it, it'd be Puppy, yep. but it's just such a cool hero mid because you can buy your own damage, you do your own damage, and you amplify it. It's yeah, it's like um, almost not a better version of Pugna, but yeah, it's more burst damage for sure. If you land the ult on the target, is I don't know how it would do against a Puck, though. If there is a Puck mid, I think it's more likely S4. It is one of his signatures. Or even um, Crit plays it sometimes with S4 yeah. and Doom. Like 3 4, the Doom Puck. Mm -hmm. I, I really think EG but just goes do so though. The nice thing with the A is the the new chilling touch. You just you're gonna get every range creep. Is what I've seen most mid AAs do. It's like anytime there's you know contest over range creep. Okay, you pop that, you get the range creep. And the A is I've seen go mid have been maxing out chilling touch too. Let's talk overall strategy for a second here because we've seen these two teams play very different styles of Dota 2. Yesterday when EG was playing, they they went for the long drawn out tactical games. And when Secret plays, it's it's still very tactical, but they play a lot faster, and they tend to end games a lot earlier as well. Mm -hmm. How do you feel like these drafts fit into those type of mindset? Are we going to see something very different here coming out oh, we already, in we terms already of have. tempo? I, I have no idea tempo what we're going to do. I mean, I don't think the tempo for Secrets changed too much. Ooh, EG goes Throw for back. the arc. This was like start of the DPC season. There was a period of time where TZ was just arc ward and TB every single game. And to, that, to your point, Chiefs, they're going to obviously go right back to that Lycan game. We look to game two against NIP. Yeah. They weren't able to win it, but at the same time, it looked like they were going to for a little while until NIP started crushing through fights. But at the moment, they're just going to try to avoid fights yes. then? Yeah, which I don't know if is the right style to approach Secret in this game. They have so much kill potential. Yeah. Evil geniuses turn to <laughs> <Strong band. laughs> Uh, yeah, for for EG, this was. I think they wait to pick their ATZ carry because they want to make sure they get the right pick because they know Secret's going to be playing faster tempo. Secret's going to look to really, you know, play quick, force towers, force fights really early on, and ATZ, and just EG as a whole is normally this more yep. mid to late game team. They pick those hard late game carries for ATZ more than Secret does. I think you want something like a Lesh here. If you're going Sumail, I like a tempo. Okay. I want something that can kill buildings and just. Find kills, you know, I, high damage output, most importantly. I guess you got to disable on that as well, because that's still yeah. kind of something that I'm, I'm lacking here. Yep. I agree. I, I, Ember, perhaps, like, something that plays with pace around the map. Lesh has super high move speed. Sumail's been going for the move speed talent and bots at points. Ember, obviously, with the remnants. You want something that can leave lane and, and play around the other EG heroes. Could also just be um, the Doom offlane puck mid, which, and you last pick a crit hero here. I think that's... Not bad. I wouldn't mind just a standard Sand King if if you want to go that route. Because I don't know if I like crit on Doom the way this is looking. Because Secrets, uh, Doom support that has a rough start will just feed all yeah. game. I think that's where more likely we see that Puck support with the Doom as a core. Okay. At least the last time they picked these two heroes that I recall during the group stage, was that was how they set it up. At the same time, that's still a little bit greedy with the four position puck. Mm. Both teams using almost all their reserve time as well. It's been a very fluid draft. Like, not not rushing to any conclusions, either, uh, either drafter. Like the Spectre ban, that's, you know, when we talk about Arc Warden, it's high reach, uh, is what you would need to kill it. And Spectre is that in a nutshell. They do go for the Ember. Okay. I like it. It's also just one of Sumail's signature heroes. I love it for him. Yeah. I. It, against this lineup, against like a mid-AA core, it's like, you get on top of AA, this yep. is a hero with no escape really, uh, just no way out, and Ember can, has a lot of kill threat on AA and on Shaman. It does mean that he's going into the matchup blind. I'm also not sure, I have a feeling it'll be AA mid, but if it's like a Rasta mid, like how does that fare against an Ember? Like I'm not actually sure what these matchups are like. I think, I mean, the Rasta mid sounds even crazier than the AA mid. At least it's, there it is. Bad. Oh boy, they were ready to pull that one out. That is, I can't believe I didn't wow. see that coming. That is an insane 22 pick Meepo. That, you like it. it? It absolutely destroys all the cores of EG. Um, you don't care about Doom too much. You, you, you get a blink. Warden? No, you just blink on top of them, spam root. Same with Ember, same with Puck. This, and not just that, you have the lifesteal aura from the Wraith King. You're going to be able to take Roche, no problem. The damage amplification on the poof. It's just 
Who's playing this? This is mid one, right? Need, does Nisha play Meepo? We're gonna have to find out. Do we? Good question. Might be Nisha something Nisha's been learning. I mean, the old secret you say Ace, obviously, but uh, oh. mid one's never really been a Meepo play, so I, I want to say Nisha's picked up the hero. It's probably him. I have no idea. Do we favor secret because of the Meepo pick? I. I don't know. I like both drafts, and I feel like this is exactly what you'd expect when you look at the series. EG, tried and true, they keep it blue. Secret, what what was that? Will they be able to play it? I don't know. So far, <laughs> they've proven yeah. they can play anything they want, so I, I'd have to give them the edge just because I think this Meepo's going to go off. Yeah, I think they'll be have no problems being a Meepo team. Yeah. Um, it's a great Meepo game. Yeah. And um, when you think Meepo, you think you want to have kill potential, you want to have lane shove, and more importantly, like you can have like four support type heroes almost, because Meepo will is all of your win condition, and and you want to win fast too with Meepo. You exactly. Don't want to yeah, and they can do against Dark Warden. So it has like four supports. They're just gonna kill everything. There's a lot to talk about, but we are not gonna do that. Someone else is gonna do that. It's gonna be Od Pixel and Fog who will take you through this upper bracket between Team Secret and Evil Geniuses. Thank you very much, Chibi. Yes, EG versus Secret. What a best of three we have up ahead of us. Fog, we've seen the picks. It is this last pick Meepo coming in for Secret. We've got core AA. We've got last pick Meepo. And it's not even a mid AA. It's an off lane AA. It's Zai playing and mid one's playing the Meepo. Let's, Let's see go. how it works out as the action begins. Prepare for battle. And here we go, as you can hear, everybody here in Paris very much ready for this matchup. Secret versus EG and Intro. Very fitting for this one. Two teams of epic proportions and two teams that have been on absolute fire this tournament so far, Fog. Absolutely. I'm really excited to see Nisha playing the Wraith King too. Not a very exciting hero, but we have seen this matchup versus the Doom played quite a lot. So we, we see like the priority switch, right? You see Crits playing the Doom and they're making Nisha play Wraith King. So you know, some, some mind games coming out in the draft for sure, especially from Secret when they have, you know, when they're opening up with an AA, looking like they have three support heroes, definitely putting EG on a bit of a confusion here. Wondering how these matchups are gonna go. Meepo versus Ember, that does not, that, not sound so great for the Ember in the mid lane, but we know what Meepos do, and he does usually just end up leaving, goes to the jungle, because he just farms so much faster there, so. Sumail will be able to get some space, and I think Sumail needs to have a pretty good time. His bottom crit. Yeah, crit taking a heavy bit of punching there from the two of them as they go in upon him. As the bounty runes will be, looks like, well, secret, they do still have eyes on that one, so they will be able to take three of the four to begin with. As Japs are waiting, seeing if uh, anyone falls to the bait, but with that ward down, EG know of his whereabouts, and we'll see how, as you say, these lane matchups do start off, as it looks to be uh, both the Oracle and our Warden RTZ going to be heading towards that top lane, and we'll be farming against... This bit of a bit of a different lane. This core off lane ancient apparition from Zai being backed up by Yapsaw on the task. It feels like these two heroes though, they've got a lot of kill potential, yes. right? It seems like they were trying to avoid the matchup bottom because it's got a lot of kill threat, but top as well, Secret's lanes are just extremely threatening. Like Wraith King Shadow Shaman, there's a lot of damage coming in between them. The stun from Wraith King is one of the more powerful ones in the early game. Top also, I mean, Tusk with Tag Team plus with AA's attack range and an Orb of Venom thrown in, if they get on top of some of these heroes, easily gonna be able to get brought down, so... EG has to just keep their distance up top. Don't let them get on top of them in particular, because they do have the double range, so the harassment game for EG should be pretty solid up top. And we'll see on the bottom, Kray has been able to make the pull through with the creeps over to the tower, so that S4 is able to hold the wave in a position where he can at least get some CS against these two very potent heroes, especially once the levels are there. He has to look out for that instant catch available from the Shaman. Ooh, they actually just, they're, they're able to note now that Puppy can't actually make a rotation in the next few moments. Puppy actually TP'd from the tower to his tower. So he wanted to make sure to get, I think, two or three creeps that went there. So now they know there's no TP on Shadow Shaman, so we could see Crit make an early move to try to put some pressure onto somewhere, because he knows that Puppy cannot move. 
And the Bottom. Yep. The orb is used by S4. He's grabbed. They've got the control on him, S4. And he's going to try his best to run away. He has got a phase shift to play with. Will try and keep himself hidden in the trees. But Nisha Puppy, that hunting, does go for the Duke down bottom. He has got an orb back up. There it is. Another phase shift will allow him to jump back to safety. As S4 will escape Secret's attempts. Very nicely done. See that mid-matchup, Sumel's doing just fine for now still. The first few waves, so nine last hits. Also going to be able to claim himself a haste rune too. Yeah, he's been able to uh, keep the harassment pretty high onto mid one. Making sure that the Meepo's aren't in position to fight. Bottom lane, crit. He's getting right click down by Puppy with that heavy right click and it's enough. This Shaman, he punches. That's poison careful. He has to be careful too. Puppy that, though. You know, that 83 right click damage that Puppy's sporting, you cannot afford to get too close to him. And even turning can be a bit scary sometimes because he's got double fairy fire and a stick as well. So if he pops one, you might actually just get grabbed instantly and get turned on as well. A stop, fly. There you get the kill on Yapso. They, they will lose fly. But both of the supports going in on one another, that nuke damage from the purifying flames. Enough to help RTZ be the first to get the kill on Yapso. Fly sets it up for him. A lot about that harassment game. If they can keep you up so low, if he's not actually able to be full health when they go for those type of committed plays. Like you said, a lot of magic damage. As soon as they're level 3 in this lane, we, we know what Oracle does now. The Purifying Flames does a crazy amount of damage, and so does even Arc Warden. As moves being done on both sides. Yeah, but S4 can turn. Send the all back out to Nisha. Nisha going very low to that Infernal Blade. He'll still keep himself alive, but both teams down bottom really giving it their all to force each other's course away from this lane. It's going to mean that there's going to be that long walk back towards the base from the Wraith King. So some time where Nisha is away from that lane, and now a bit of space to allow S4 to catch back up. He was suffering to get the CS, but now with that sort of space, he'll be able to start catching up in the farm. Puppy's very fortunate that he got the uh, early kill, the first blood. Being a Shadow Shaman, his 5 position sometimes can be a bit tough. We don't see it that often because you're just very slow sometimes. But now he gets boots starting off right away. So that makes your life just so much easier now. Just being able to make your moves and not get punished down. Because you just take one step out of position. And yeah, stop so fly. Does manage to blood fly off. Fly He's trying to cut his way through the trees. A couple of them taken down and he will get himself up to the high ground. But Zion, yep, so... They'll continue to chase on Fly. He's trying his best to run a quick route. Will create a bit of a distance between him and Yapsaw. But the south is being cancelled by that long range hit from Zai. Fly still on the run. Shards will be back up in a second. And Yapsaw has Mango as well. But he messes it up. Oh no, Yapsaw. A rare mistake from the top tier player as the Shards won't trap Fly. And Fly is able to walk back to base. You have to be very thankful of that as Fly. Yeah, I don't. We do not see that happen very often. Not in those type of situations there. And we'll see it again, bro, oh, Jaffe. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> As one of the easiest shards potentially in his life, but he's, he misses it. I mean, look, it Fly sort of jumps over. There's a little bit of OS Frog in that. Hmm. For sure, as Fly is able to slide to safety. He had his ice skates on. There's five minute runes coming up. See who's able to hold them, Puppy. It's in position, but Crip will try and go and chase this one down a little bit. Puppy. Has S4 around as well, Puppy. Popping the first fire fire, but S4 is onto the high ground, looking for those body blocks, making sure that Crip can get that extra bit of damage and blocking Puppy away from the Shrine, but another fire and the Shrine. Puppy will survive. Top lane, Fly tries to go in on mid one. Doesn't have the damage to kill him off as Fly will lose his life. Back towards bottom, Sameo. He's joined forces with Crip and S4 to kill off Puppy, and they will claim the kill. I like that aggressive move by Sumail. Right, you're not seeing anybody in the mid lane. You know the Meepo's just jungling. Fly just gave you that information too. Now you have liberty as Sumail to really just put pressure on the lanes. Make moves around the map. Don't let Meepo do what he likes to do. Don't let Meepo just sit in the jungle and then they just send him to mid to soak the experience. So we're going to be watching Sumail for a bit here. Just making these aggressive plays for his team. He needs to make the space maker, right? He's got an Arc Warden on his team. We're going to see this Ember running around non-stop. Nisha. Right, five blast on to crit. Crit's dead. That damage too much, and in fact with a Hex, they can look towards S4. He has the, he has the shift and will be able to get back. He should not quite have the stun back up again, but Yapsaw's now come into this bottom lane. S4's got to be a little careful. Let's use the orb. We'll see if they're able to get some sort of a wrap round. This puppy with the wards ready starts to get that vision down bottom. So extra control, S4's got to be careful as he heads a little close. Puppy can't quite get the grab though. S4 keeps his distance, gets back. Mid lane, slider fist being used to dodge any sort of poof attempt from mid one. As Samael's farm continuing to look very good in this mid lane. Sure, mid one has the edge with the, the fact that he's been able to turn to the jungle a little bit as well. But this Amber still hitting the timings. And Samael, we saw it earlier with that first move. You can expect him to be very mobile and be there to react to any sort of play from Secret in the side lanes. 
and try and give EG that number of advantage to get the kills. Yeah, he's always going to be using Flame Guard, pushing the lane out, force the Meepo go to jungle, and then make a move immediately. You yeah. see him starting to do it already toward that top lane. Super easy kills for him, too. If he's able to get on top of the AA, so it's like a very dead side. Yeah, this is absolutely perfect read of the game for Samael. You can feel it already. He is ready to go, and any chance that he sees to move around the map and take those kills, he'll be there. Yeah. And you know, you know what he needs to do, right? Like, it's, it's very telltale when there's the meatball. Because now, Yapsor goes to the mid lane. You know what they're trying to do. They're trying to distribute their resources as best as possible. So have to put those aggressive plays out. And EG, in fact, is... Oh, the they are heading towards this top. I want to try and take this tower down, as you say, with the first siege wave. And Zai, not a whole lot he can do. Yet to hit that six, of course, on that core. AA up top. He has to keep his distance fly. We'll send the root out. Yapsor and mid one are here as well. Crit and Samel heading up to the high ground. Yapsor, tag team. The root onto the two of them with the nest. They're trying to kill off Crit. They'll get him. But there's the jump from Samel. They've killed off the Meepo. And Samel, he could try and chase for more. Will he be affected by the freeze? He won't. He's able to get away from it in time. But still killing off this Meepo. They'll certainly take that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, in the meanwhile, it's Artiz is able to put some pressure on the tower. He's getting, he pretty much has the Midas finished up on this Arc Warden. S4 has gotten a much better time down bottom after that start. Sure, still some suffering on last hits, but new level 6 on the puck. Levels are the most important thing down here for him. S4. We got to see some of the fun, of course. The potential that this game does have right there. We saw the tag team plus the Meepo start to play out. How much damage it really can come in when we see those levels come in. That's, I mean, it's really fun. It's something that we really have to keep, we'll have to keep an eye on when he does isolate targets. Now down bottom. TP's coming in. They're going to bring Artesi in as well for this. Samel also charging forward. See if they can catch down Puppy. Samel, he's going to put a remnant down in the trees, forcing Puppy to head up to the north. And they'll chase him down in the trees, and again, EG just making these fluid moves across the map. Samel now 103. He is everywhere they need him to be. And it's a free rotation for Arteezy, too. It's not himself. He just pops his clone, sends his clone down bottom, and it's, it's literally just for free that he's able to do that to get maybe in a little bit of extra involvement for his team to set up for those kills, even though he probably wasn't needed anyway. It's just that little heads-up move that he can do with the Tempest double as well as his TP. As he will just be continuing to farm, he, he has the Midas finished up at a pretty good time, that 9 minutes. Got the Ice Blast lying in on bottom, but there won't be any other sort of defense at the moment from Secret. ZG allowed to get some free damage onto the Tier 1 tower. They are now starting to lead over with both Puppy and the Wraith King. Nisha, see if they can get the catch. Hex to lead in. Nisha is there as well. Crit, can he get over and help out his man? Samel, has got the slide of fist. He'll try and jump himself away, dodging the snowball. There's the jump into the side. This oh, oh, the shot. Japsaw will grab him, but he's got another remnant available. Samel continuing on the retreat. They've just turned up Samel, trying to hide in the trees, but they find him with the root. They've got the stun follow up. Can Samel get out of this one? It doesn't look like it. He cannot. They'll kill off the ember. Secret finally able to punish Samel for those movements and for that aggression. Yaps are making up for the shards from earlier with some... Absolutely beautiful ones. They're getting invasive here. They're looking to try to claim all four bounty runes. A blast coming down too. And another shards blocking the root out for crit. Crit surrounded. Crit's gone. Oh, S4, S4 as well. He's hit by the ice blast and he will. It's on point from Zai across the map. As EG lose three. And they get the all four bounty runes. And they get the power rune as well. An invis rune on Yapsur to continue some aggression. They have the shrine bottom. They have a smoke available too if they choose to do so. Their levels, uh, it looks like Puppy's going to be the one who is taking the tome in this game, appropriate for your Shadow Shaman to get those Serpent Wards early on. Also noting that he's pointing, put two points in Hex, I think we've seen this more and more often, especially when you're playing versus a hero like Puck, it's all about just getting the, the just instant disable on him. A lot of space continuing to be there for mid one to stay ahead of the pack with the farm that he has. This is a Meepo in that top spot, the triple Wraith fans into the Eve Blade. Yep, and it's a great game for the Meepo. As well, he has a plethora of targets. Their, their damage on EG can start to ramp up, but it's going to take time. Ember Spirit and the Arc Warden both don't naturally deal with your Mirmipa too well. Ember kind of does, but he definitely is going to need at least that one item before he can start to trickle him down. Because the Meepo is going to be ahead of the Ember in the majority of this game, just from the nature of the hero. And EG, the smoke set up around me if they want to try and catch off another core. Now does have the tome. He is near level six on the Doom, but 
it looks like they're going to try to give him a little bit of experience in the mid lane as they make a rotation toward bottom with Sumail. Like we said, Sumail is just going to be running around, constantly looking for plays. S4 bottom. They're going to start the play onto him. See if they've got the damage to get him before he can jump out. No, he's still alive. He jumps to the side. Serpent wants to drop down. That would kill him. But now EG, they're ready for the turnaround play. They'll look towards the two of them. Dream coils down. Sumail trying to slowly burn them with the flame guard. Extra TP's coming in as RTZ will look to join the fight. Puppy goes with the hex onto Sumail. Yapso leading it onto Fly. Fly with the self force promise will keep himself alive. They lost Puppy. Jump forward though from EG. They have the root, the control, they'll kill off Nisha once, can they do it again? There's the Doom, Crit had it saved and ready to go for more. Arteezy with himself and the Tempest double, offering the damage needed to kill off Nisha. Double kill for Arteezy, and EG may not be done yet, they're looking to move in and chase down potentially Yapso and Zai, they'll push this wave in. Zai and Yapso will be fine though, as it seems that the mana has run out, so nothing else for EG to offer in that attempt. Good responses from EG, just bringing absolutely everybody to go for those kills. And in the meanwhile, it looks like mid one's decision was, I'm not gonna join you guys. I'm prioritizing something else. Takes the mid tower, immediately sends another Meepo top and looking to claim a secondary tower at the same time. Knowing that EG, they committed everything to look for that fight. Coil was used, every single, uh, the Doom was used as well and all the rotations too, the TP's. And we will start seeing the decision of which item it's gonna be for Sumail. He has to itemize to deal with the Meepo. It's not the Maelstrom, it's the Battle Fury. It's this the way you again. gotta go. Yep. It absolutely is. A lot of opportunities for Sumail to hit those big cleaves when the group up is there from mid one. But it's going to be hard to find those situations. As you say, with the way that mid one's playing at the moment, yeah. he isn't grouping up with the team. He's elsewhere. But still the Battle Fury, a beautiful line to behold. Bottom, Zai. We look towards, but Yap so quick with the TP. Crit and Fly cannot go for any more damage upon him. One thing EG does always have to keep inside of their minds this game is the Roche potential. We know that Meepo can do it very easily, but you throw a Meepo and a Wraith King, it's also, they can also do Meepo with Tusk. They have a lot of different options on the side to be able to just two-man or three-man or, you know, one of those type of combinations to take out the Roche. So EG does have to keep tabs around there soon. So getting a ward around that top sign, I think, is definitely something they should be looking to do pretty soon. Because as soon as Ethereal Blade is finished up, that Meepo, he can just walk right into the Roche Pit with one more hero and it's going to use Pickens. He's going to get the root from the trees, in comes the backup, he's got the chamber, and Samael's in trouble, Samael's straight up dead! Meepo with the play fail of gone, there's going to be a buyback for Samael! EG Dream Call down, they've got to get return kills, crit, saved just in time by the false promise! There's no nice first flying in, but Meepo, he's still alive! He's going to look towards S4 Samael, they'll get themselves back and they will kill off the Meepo! So with that buyback from Samael, they do get some vengeance, they will take down both Puppy and Meepo. Oof, S4 was very close to ticking out as well. Fly, just in case, does throw the Fates eating on him there. But this Meepo is really showing how much power he has in the game, just enforcing all of the rotations from EG. He's got global potential too, so that makes it a lot scarier. Like, this Meepo's fighting, you're like, okay, sometimes when you're fighting Meepo's early game, you're all dropping very low, but you're like, all right, we're okay. Throw an AA Blast on top, it can change the tides entirely. Uh, sort of having to use that buyback early on from Samael, it is going to mean that the, the Battle Fury is not going to be an incredibly and quick one, and easy caught out. Ooh. Remnant gets him away. Samael will live to see another day, but bottom lane, Nisha takes the tier one tower. Constant aggression. This is exactly what we wanted in this series. 21 kills at this 14 minute mark already, and it does not look like it's going to be slowing down at all. Secret ready to move with the smoke. They know if they can get Samael once again, it's going to be quite a while that he's off the map and his first major item will be heavily slowed down. As EG, they have to make sure that Samael's always in position where he has backup behind him, they have ways to keep him safe. As long as Fly's in the neighborhood, he should be safe. Should be able to offer that false promise, that safety and security to allow Samael to at least get his spells off, be able to jump away yeah. to safety. As Roshan, it's gonna be looked towards. In they go, they can do this pretty quickly between the three of them, and EG. It will spot it out. S4 is going to send in the, the orb, but already just the amount of damage the side throws out. Fly, he will be there to help him. But for now, there's going to be the roll. And in fact, no, it doesn't, it's not enough to save him. S4's dead. Samel in the river. Puppy, he's got the hex, the shackles. They're on top of the ember. Samel, he does have the slide of fist. The root will still be there again. Mip one just controlling him up, holding Samel in place. Samel, he cannot get out of this. Another slide. He's still surrounded. We'll have the remnant ready, though. He was prepared for that situation to get out of there, but Secret, they've got Rose, they've got the Aegis on Meepo. So hard to play Ember in this type of, in this matchup versus Meepo. Sure, you can slight to try to buy yourself time in between those nets, but man, they just have so much control for this as we see, that's exactly what we were talking about, right? It's that Rose, we know that they're gonna make a move very early into that pit with just the nature of their heroes, and EG uh, did not really have everything available, and S4, he's the most important one in the game to start the fights besides Sumail, and Sumail, if he jumps in, he's already used his buyback. If he dies there, they are absolutely gonna lose so much control of the game, so S4 dying there, they immediately can't make a contest into that pit. 
Main. Yapsaw, a step a little far forward here, Crip, and Arteezy will be quick to turn upon him, and Yapsaw, he's got no escape. Still showing him, Arteezy does have that item on him already now, he does have the Maelstrom, so his damage is very high, he is 3 and 4 actually in this game as the Arc Warden. Yeah, that's where the power is at the moment for EG, the other core is starting to, to really fall behind. It is just Arteezy that has that sort of power spike in the middle, flight, caught out by the Hex, the control from Secret, way too much. Blast from mid one as well with that E-Blade, and Fly's gone. It is a very scary timing here for EG. They've got their ultis available. Yeah, like you said though, S4, he is... Oof, he is pretty much in even net worth as his Doom and the Tusk in the game. Unable to find any space to find the blink for them to get a good initiation. Yeah, but, so, yeah. Sumail kind of has to play as an initiator, but it's so scary versus this Meepo. It was a hard lane for S4 to start with. Yeah. Up against this double disable. S4, a slow start, but again that he's going to try and his best to recover, already they'll jump in, Blink Dagger picked up by Mipwon, they're on top of S4 and he's dead. gone once again, the puck is dead. He really just, he feels like a support puck now at this point, just because of how far set back he is, brought down by, just takes so much, even just from the Tusk, I just saw Yapsar punch him for nearly three quarters of his HP because he has his Treads double bracer build on Tusk. And they're eyeing up some mail on top, just the two of them though. Hard for them to really have that opening initiation. They need either either the Puppy Shaman or the Midbomb Meepo to have that instant jump and go to catch Samel off guard. But Samel will be fine mid lane. They found another big core jumping onto Arteezy. Midbomb with the blink, making the plays and in fact up top. They're going for Zai. Zai will be able to turn, get the Ice Blast out onto the two of them. Crit fucked up by the False Promise. Will be able to move in and get Zai. The rest of Secret are turning up though, so EG have to get out of there. Fly will be unable to do so as Midbomb picks up another kill. And now, still this 5k lead that Secret are holding on to as EG struggling to really slow down the pace of this Meepo lineup that Secret have. I mean, they really just got the most important kill in the game for Secret. They, they killed Arteezy there. Arteezy's the one who's dealing with the split push, dealing with the side lanes for the most part. And now, they can just walk up and look and take a tier 2. Mid lane's also pretty low as well. So mid lane just jumping in for some mid. He's just going for it. Again, with these roots, there's nothing that Samel can do. He's dead and gone. 70 seconds. A long, long time to be dead at just the 19-minute mark. And Samel still without that first item. He's trying his best to get that Battle Fury. Zai hunting S4 down bottom as well. Has the Atos from earlier. Let's see if he can get this on his own. Ice Blast. It's out upon him. S4 will jump out. He's trying for the TP, but they'll see him as S4 He's will go. Zai getting the solo kill. As EG really beginning to crumble now. They have Serpent Wards. They're going to threaten high ground. The deep push from EG is dead. And Secret pushed so fast that the Wards, the Skeletons, the Meepos, they've got all the siege potential. And EG with two cores dead. How do they stop this mid one? Straight in on top of Crit. Fly, Crit, and Arteezy. They're having to run back to their base. But Crit's not going to be able to get away. Shackles is there to hold him down. Secret, they'll continue pushing on. And this I don't know how. This is a dead rack. How, sure. how do EG slow this down? Just I don't think they can. Arteezy just has to keep spamming, but he has to be careful. If he gets jumped, anyone gets jumped, there's that. There's no false promise. S4 is back up, so they have some of their deep push here, but the Rax is already gone. He's trying his best to throw the bubbles to protect them on those opposing sides, but... As he's gone, 20 he's minute gone. mark. They're Secret. all responding though. Breaking the base, Mip one able to poof away. See if they can get any sort of catch, Samel. Chains onto the two of them, Ice Blast out though in return. Back onto Arteezy, Arteezy's got to be careful. It's a four man dream call, but there's very little follow up for EG. They have no damage, no items on this Ember. And mid one just keeps jumping in with no fear. He's He's got like 2,000 health on this Meepo. He doesn't have to worry about anything here. He's a full Desolator too on oh the Wraith King. Goodness. Secret just picking up a plethora of items here, cleaning up the shrines, back up, collect those bounties too. And oh, EG, they're going to need a miracle here to try to bring them back as this one is. I mean, we, I'm looking at the, his net worth. It's like Sumail. How does he deal with a Meepo now who's got double his net worth? He's still, what, 1,100 gold away from having the Battle Fury. Yeah. And even when you have that at this point with the stats the mid one has, it's... It's gonna tickle. You're gonna tickle. Yeah. And they're even starting to... Okay, they actually changed it up. I saw Zai building toward a uh, mech build, but he actually switched to just go for a glimmer for himself to protect the back lines, because the one thing that Zai does have to worry about is if he gets jumped in the back, but he's pretty tanky, and now with this, it's a lot more survivabilities. Yes. Tons of items being picked up from Secret. Even a Shadow Blade now from Yapsor. So I'm a little worried of... I'm, I'm, I was already worried for S4, but I'm worried that he might just get punched into death from a position 4 Tusk.
I mean, this game as well, for sure, you know, this is Secret still very much playing at this incredible level that they have done so far this tournament. Yeah. But how much would you say this is on the draft? You know, Secret getting this fifth pick Meepo, is this draft just that much better than EG's in this game? I mean, this Meepo really changes, it changes everything. A 22 pick Meepo is always going to do that. And then they also have two very strong pressure lanes that EG were not able to actually respond with too well. Top did fine. Top did great, the arc warning. But bottom, you just look, S4 had a nightmare of a game. And he's very important for this game on the puck. A secret around the mid, ready to go in towards the base again. EG, what can they do to stop this? RTZ has got the full me on it. Tempest double, gonna get critted down in a couple of hits by Nishi. Track oh, it's gonna be there on the they're gonna try and go for this, but at the same time, Secret, they're collapsing onto, onto RTZ. The Doom was laid down onto Nishi, but he still has that reincarnate. He's gonna have that second life. Midpoint jumps in. Shackles are there as well. Samel's trapped. He's dead and gone. Secret, they look towards Critch. Controls there for Midpoint with the reach. Crit's dead as well. Triple kill. Samel. The Meepo. There's the buyback for Samel, but he's surely gonna die yet again. He has a remnant in the trees. But Nisha, he's chasing, he's hunting. Midpoint, eyes onto Flash. He's moving in on the Oracle. The E-Blade's out upon him. Fly's trying his best to run. Shackled down to Samael. It's a dieback. It's a rampage. It's mid one. He gets both of those kills at the same time. Splitting the Meepos up. Killing both Fly and Samael together. This man's Meepo. It just looked absolutely perfect this game. Mid one has had a brilliant time. The draft was set up for him to do so, but he has played it flawlessly. This game is impossible for EG to come back in now. This Meepo is just way too big. Everybody on the side of the Just tear through the base. Yeah. And this is another thing now you have to add to your question mark list, list of when you're drafting versus C. Yep. You gotta watch out for a last pick Meepo as they brought it to their arsenal and displayed that mid one is a beast on the hero as he's taking over completely. Absolutely is. The mid racks getting taken down. 30 seconds where the EG do not have Samael alive. Ice Glass won't quite connect. But EG, they've already lost the melee racks here in that middle lane. And Secret, they're just able to walk away with no consequences whatsoever. Yapso, he's playing around with S4 up top. As S4 is sort of trapped and he has got the orb. As he will try and jump away. Yapso is he's probably suspicious that he could be around here, but he doesn't have the shards back up, so cannot hunt for him in the trees. I'm just looking at the items that Yapsor is uh, queuing up this game, and I can just tell they're having a good time. They're feeling very confident. He's got a Deso queued up on the Tusk now, too, so, yeah. I mean, and you just look over to some of the members of EG, you know, Samael, he's been having so many stellar performances this tournament, but Secret just absolutely breaking him this game as he's got treads and an unfinished Battle Fury at 24 minutes in. Not even just, I mean, mostly mid one, to be honest, right? Mid one just has been bullying Sumail in this game for the most part, just with the roots. Sumail's trying to walk in and he's just like, I can't actually move in most of these matchups because I'm just stuck inside of these earth binds. Been very well played by Secret as they back up. They still have firm control. Pretty sure they're picking up a couple more of their items here too. Got, I mean, Meepo hacks an, and another ulti orb on top after all that. Almost level 20. They now have S4's Blink Dagger, but the damage on their lineup has been significantly cut. Ember Spirit is less net worth than the four positions. Nearly, nearly less net worth than all of the heroes on the side of Secret. He only has 1,200 more than the Shadow Shaman. So his damage, I mean, without Battle Fury, even with Battle Fury, he's going to be tickling quite a bit. But this could be one of the last goes for EG as they picked up a couple items. Spirit Vessel and that Blink. They got to try to make something happen. They can't let Secret get this Roche. They need some sort of insane play here. They really do. 17k behind. Two sets of racks down. Samael with no items. They'll try and go, but the shards are there. Blocking off the Tempest double. S4 goes in with the two-man Dream Coil. But the armlet's on. Nish is more than fine here on his first life. There's a tank it up. The Doom has been dropped down, but Crit will fall. The Ice Blast over onto the turn, and Crit and S4 are dead. No buybacks available for them. They do lose Poppy, but Poppy buys back straight away. RTZ surrounded by Secret as they run him down. He does manage to pick up a second kill onto the Tusk, but the damage will burn through after the False Promise ends. RTZ Easy is dead, mid one's looking for more, flies caught and trapped down, E-Blade blast, the roots out as well, mid one continuing on his beyond godlike streak this game, as Secret will just barrel down the mid lane, and very shortly you'd imagine look to try and force this game to an end, as now the buybacks come out from EG, it seemed like they had their last chance a long long time ago, but they're still going to try and give it something. Yeah, Secret's just way too farmed at this point. EG, they even get they get a pretty decent coil, but just the front line is too strong. This Tusk and this Wraith team, they're the ones that are actually caught inside the coil. 
He's been X. Mid one's there on top of him. He just get the remnants out in time. We'll be able to jump over. And mid one's chasing. Samel's trying his best to juke. He has another slide of fist. He's going for the slide TP, but mid one's got the damage. Another death on Samel. 22k lead now at 26 minutes in for Secret. Firm control. Queuing up their last few items that they can get, but they, they don't really need them too much, but they've got so much extra gold coming in from others. Like you said, 23,000 gold lead. Four of the top five net worths in the game, and they're looking to close this one out. As EG's with the smoke, maybe hoping to catch someone off guard. A mid one just presents himself, starts to push in. It will have some mail back in 10. A secret, not mid one, he's already in the trees. As far as he's dead. He's just straight onto the park. He's got the rune on to fly. They've got to run back to the fountain, EG. They cannot afford to step anywhere close to this Meepo. As mid one will help them finish off this final set of racks. Serpil walks down as well. They have a fortification to buy some time. And mid one jumps across, gets the kill on crit. Double kill for the Meepo. The damage on the racks will continue. Samel jumps in. He'll be quick to jump out as well, but he Hex. cannot. The Hex is there. Triple kill for mid one. EG getting absolutely slaughtered. GG is called. And Secret making a mockery of evil geniuses in this game one. What else is there really to say? This was an absolutely commanding performance from I... all of Secret. Everybody looked like they were having a great time. They threw the draft.